Uh, my name is Ken Johnson, principal of Merrimack High School, and each year, uh, towards the end of the spring, we work together with the fire, police agencies, and other community agencies, and of course our student group, uh, Student Against Destructive Decisions, to create what we call a mock DUI scenario. It's a simulated motor vehicle accident in which the operator, operators in this case are actors from the uh, Students Against Drunk Driving, um, are um, involved in it. It's a, the, the driver is under the influence, there's a fatality, and there are several serious injuries. Our involvement in the uh, DUI program that's uh, put up for the seniors is that we are here to simulate uh, emergency medical services and rescue services. I would have to say that it's probably the most powerful presentation we do each and every year. Typically, at a motor vehicle accident, a call comes in through 911 or a cell phone, and the officers respond to a particular location where an accident's occurred. The officers will arrive, and then they begin, they approach the scene where they'll try and determine who's injured and who's not. They'll, they'll speak with those parties um, and try and um, basically uh, sustain those in, those individuals till the ambulance and the fire department arrives. Our response in the DUI program and, and any motor vehicle accident is that we're there to provide medical services and uh, on the onset of an accident uh, we get toned out by our dispatch headquarters. Uh, the staff at the fire department is career they're there 24 hours a day and we provide ambulance fire and rescue services. Uh, as we proceed with the incident, we have to look at uh, patient care. Uh, how many victims we have, do we need additional resources, manpower, do we need additional ambulances. And uh, once we do an assessment of the patients and who is injured, uh, we have to determine how bad they are injured. Uh, after the ambulance and fire department take over handling the injured, uh, the officers begin their police investigation into the motor vehicle accident and the cause of it. The officers will speak with, if they can, both drivers. They'll observe the vehicles and the positioning of the vehicles. Most of the evidence we gain as to how an accident happens is from the two operators. Um, and typically in a DWI involved accident, an officer will be speaking with uh, the driver and they'll begin to observe signs of possible impairment such as a, an odor of an alcoholic beverage coming from their breath, or bloodshot glassy eyes, impaired speech, uh, poor coordination, poor motor skills. The fire department will uh, start performing extrication. And what that is, is that's the uh, sequential removal of the car from around the patient. Uh, once the individual is involved in a motor vehicle accident, their injuries are, are very traumatic and by moving those individuals the wrong way or too soon, we could cause more injuries. So what we do is we use our uh, extrication tools, we call them the jaws of life, and uh, we actually cut the car around the victim and remove the victim in that manner. And basically, the officers, if they've developed enough probable cause, will ask the operator to perform field sobriety tests. The, the field sobriety tests that the officers administer at the scene would be the horizontal gaze nystagmus, which would measure the movement of the eyes. Um, the second would be a walk and turn test. And the third would be a one-legged stand test. Um, and that's all determined if the operator in the accident can actually perform these tests. And if there's not, there's other ways in which the officer will try and make a determination as to whether or not he feels the, the operator was impaired. But in this situation, if the offer, in, the, in this situation, the operator is able to perform field sobriety tests, and ultimately the officer deems that the operator failed and places him under arrest for DWI. In this case, at the scene, Unless we have um, a clear um, definition of whether there's serious bodily injury and what it is, or if there's a fatality, 
the charge initially will be DWI. If we could see that there was um, a, some type of serious bodily injury, it would be an automatic B felony, um, and, that, and that would uh, be punishable by up to anywhere from one and a half to six years in state's prison. If there was a fatality at the scene or a fatality was caused by this accident, it would then become either manslaughter or negligent homicide. Manslaughter being uh, punishable by up to 30 years in state prison and negligent homicide being punishable by up to six and a half to 15 years in state prison. As the Merrimack Fire Department, this is one of the one of those top uh, projects that I think is very important to the community. Not only are we trying to educate the students of Merrimack High, we're hoping that they will tell their friends that uh, they were involved in a mock DUI demonstration and it was heart throbbing to see people injured. Uh, it was, I hope the term they use is ghastly, to see somebody that was injured that bad and we were, they had to be cut out of a car. As principal of the high school, where you are responsible for the lives of these kids each and every day, over 1,500 kids, and you think about these things, and you think about life in general, and you learn that life is indeed uh, unpredictable, and you learn that uh, each and every day uh, is a blessing. And you're concerned that here you have the greatest resource uh, coming in and out of your doors each and every day, and those are our kids. And you know how vulnerable they are. And you know that life can turn on a dime because life, quite frankly, is all about decisions. And often it's not um, a poor decision. Sometimes it's just a moment's indecision that can cause personal tragedy, one that affects each and every one of us in this community. The men and women of the Merrimack, New Hampshire Police Department support this program. By the end of this school year, it's our continued hopes that we go through another year without any DWI fatalities. It's our hopes that the kids are impressed with this, pro this program uh, and that, uh, as I said earlier, that the thoughts of this program carry on in their minds and when, they ha when they're presented with the decision to drink and or drive, that they make the right decision.